Okay, folks, 2006 Honda VTX 1800. She's a big girl. Customer states that a Honda dealer did some work on it. Now it's got some engine noise. Let's check it out right now. Go ahead and crank it up. Let's see what it sounds like because I want to hear it crank. Do your normal startup. Good, but they adjusted the rear. But also, I know. Um, sounds like the front one doing it. Yeah, but it that, could. That's I could what be I think. wrong. That, that's what I think too. It sounds like it's coming from the front, but they assisted. Thanks assist, assisted on saying it was um, a gasket, the exhaust gaskets, which those should be new. Well, but, we'll see about that. Yeah. But the thing is, um, that that is true. A lot of times, an ex, an exhaust ch -ch -ch can sound yeah. exactly like a. A yeah. uh, valve clearance issue, but um, you know we'll have to um, we'll have to look into Let's that. Yeah, it's, uh... it cranks good. That's good. So all right. So the clip just before this was a quick one of it running when I went to pick it up. A uh, customer doesn't have a way to bring it over. I didn't want him to ride it because the way he described it on the telly uh, was that it's got an engine knock. Now more on that here in a second. Uh, let's do a quick walk around. Show you some different stuff. This bike uh, is a 2006, as I said before. You can tell that because it says 2006. And, uh, <laughs> and of course, um, you know, it's in okay shape. Uh, the customer said that he picked it up from a pawn shop. I don't remember how long ago that was. And that, uh, that location or that organization, whatever you want to call it, that business picked it up from the estate of whoever owned it. Somebody died, it was sitting for a couple of years etc etc same old story um, this is a fuel injected bike which typically I don't work on because fuel injection usually I can't read the e ECUs or anything but since we're not really dealing with a fuel system problem uh, we're gonna we're gonna do we're gonna work on it all right so <laughs> he um, he dropped it on the left side apparently uh, in his yard or something and bent this up he said he had it bent back out but it's still bent a little bit that's probably where this happened. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, these got cut off. Uh, probably, you know, he said he cut them off for I don't know some reason. And then um, the rest of it, uh, you know, it is what it is. Mileage-wise, not bad. It's like what is that? Uh, Sixty-four hundred and change miles on it. So it's got low mileage. So the story is that he took it into a local Honda dealer and I'm not going to say the dealer's name and then I don't remember the reason why he brought it in it may have been just a feature you know a thing of maintenance he was doing you know, he was just trying to bring it in for for maintaining it I don't know so he said that he had them he wanted them to do a valve clearance check and adjustment and replace the exhaust gaskets the I'm assuming they're o-rings just like the crush you know crush gaskets on the exhaust and uh, so he um, he had them do that and he said he picked up the bike and it sounded fine ran fine but very shortly thereafter it started to make a lot of engine noise like clackety clack 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 type noise now he swears that before that he brought it to a different independent and this was probably weeks or months before that and had an oil change done and he said that after the oil change he heard an engine knock now I asked him if the oil light or the oil may have been low and the oil light didn't go out he goes no the oil lights been going out and so forth we're gonna check the oil level here in a second the oil light was going out for us so I didn't worry about it when I picked it up so it's obviously got oil pressure and we only ran it like I said for a very short period of time which was in the clip before like I said because it is making a lot of noise so the noise in my opinion is top end and it seems to be coming from the front jug more than the rear now the honda dealer allegedly said that the front valves didn't need any adjustment 
uh, the rears only. So I don't know why that'd be the case, and I'm not sure if these are loose or not. We're gonna find out because the Honda manual says you gotta pull the exhaust off to um, uh, do the valve clearance check because uh, you gotta get this cover off and then there's a uh, plug on this side to take out and then you can get at the crank bolt and that's how you turn it clockwise to, to clock it. Um, you know, bar the motor over manually to clock it for the appropriate uh, valve clearance uh, checking. So my initial thought was when he talked when I talked to him on the phone yesterday or whenever that was that maybe they didn't turn the engine correctly in, in the clockwise direction. Maybe they forced it backwards and perhaps it jumped a tooth or something. I don't know. But the way it cranks and the way it runs, I, I don't think that's the case. I can't run it for you right now again because I don't want to run it anymore because of the noise it's making. But you're going to have to kind of imagine it from that little clip. It's definitely making a, a lot of noise. All right. He said when it warms up, it gets worse. And that would make sense. If um, we had a problem in the valve uh, adjustment um, and then it gets hot and the adjustments get even, you know, the space or I should say the clearance gets even bigger, it's going to bigger, it's going to get noisier. Now, the thing that bothers me the most is he said, and I'm going to get back to what I was mentioning before. He, the, the dealer, when he brought it home from the dealer after they did the alleged work, and he started up, rode home, it wouldn't make any noise, and then shortly thereafter it started. And that kind of bothers me because that is suggestive that they did adjust the valves, some of them, being that these are stem and nut adjusters. You can see one of the adjuster uh, doors or ports right up in here. We're going to have to take off to get in there to check the exhaust on the front jug. Um, maybe they didn't tighten the nuts and they loosened up and hopefully didn't loosen up all the way and they're not where they're supposed to be or they're they're not where they're not supposed to be rather. So yeah, we're going to have to figure that out. So according to the service manual, what you have to do on this is to, uh, to get, you know, do the job properly is fuel tank, um, you gotta loosen up a couple of doodads here and there which are inconsequential and then remove the exhaust probably to get this off. Right? He said that the dealer was supposed to, as, as I said before, change out these exhaust gaskets. I wanna see if that's the case. It's gonna be air apparent if it's not because the ones in there will be all smoked and uh, the ones in here will be fresh. So we'll take a look at those. I think we will pull the uh, most of it, if not all of it off and then uh, take a look. So anyway, let me get you set up in the stand, but actually let me show you this side first and then we'll, I, I meant to do a complete walk around. Of course I get distracted. Don't know how this happened. He, he doesn't remember. Maybe it was existing and uh, you know, overall it's not terrible, but you know, it's been sitting outside. It's got some corrosion to it. He said he had the brakes done. The brakes are definitely not dragging. They seem to work okay. Now, naturally, when we do this job, we're going to do some other stuff, too. We're going to verify the fluids. We're going to check the coolant level. We're going to do our normal due diligence. So now let's set you up in the stand, and we'll go ahead and get this tank off, and then we'll get into it and see what we got. Okie doke. Um, exhaust is off, obviously. That was kind of a pain in the ass because of the heat shield around the front exhaust. You have to kind of bend it out of the way to get at these um, studs. And I'm not 100% certain that they actually took this exhaust off. I'm seeing evidence that they may not have done that, which leads me to believe that they probably didn't take this off either. And maybe they just got in here to the point where they could get these covers off, assuming that they did. And I haven't looked at the uh, exhaust gasket yet. I probably should do that. And maybe bumped it around and guessed at where it was, estimated. I don't know, because just not seeing a lot of evidence. There's a lot of frozen stuff in here. Anyway, PCV valves out of the way. I think I mentioned that. The rear coil, I'm just going to move around as necessary. I marked it as far as where the wires go so I don't screw it up. You know how good I am at doing that. Let's take a look in here. Now, they may have actually done that. Yeah, these don't look too old. Possible that is a newer exhaust gasket. It's not even fully crushed. Possible. Remember, this was a couple months ago. Now, he says he hasn't run it much, but who knows? Well, that doesn't look bad. We're going to reuse that. Let's take a look at the rear one. Ugh. Yeah, and there's still, there's still a little grease around it. 
where you'd stick them in place. So I would say they did do this. So maybe I am wrong. Maybe I'm uh, rushing to judgment. I'm sorry, Mr. Dealer. I didn't want to doubt you. So anyway, um, yeah, they may have done that. So I stand corrected. I mean, I'm usually not wrong, except most of the time. So here we go. This is nice and tight. We'll leave that. And let's see, what are we going to do now? Oh, yeah, I'm going to take this cover off. And we'll get at that plug that's down in there. It's a standard type of plug that you see on the sides of engines when they're not covered with covers like this. And then we'll uh, pull the covers off the uh, valve clearance, uh, you know, the tappets, whatever you want to call them, the stem and nuts. And then we can start barring it, uh, barring it around. If we do the front cylinder first, for example. We'll watch the intake valves open and then, I'm sorry, <laughs> yeah, open and close. That means we're up on the compression stroke and then we'll bring it up to the appropriate number then we know we're at top dead center markings on that that relate to the compression stroke on this and same for the rear for the rear one and of course lost the audio i don't know what's wrong with my mic but it's gone so i'm going to do a quick voiceover and you can see in this shot i have the covers off to the valve adjusters on both jugs here's the front jug and uh, then I go to the rear here, and so that's ready to go. That, as you can see, that rear one for the exhaust is a real pain in the butt to get at. But once you displace all the crap around it, it isn't too bad, ultimately. There's a bad ground on this uh, ground wire that goes for the... It actually mounts where the coil mounts, so we'll go ahead and fix that. And the, uh, you know, the connectors that go on the actual coil are a little bit loose, and so we'll fix that as well. So through that little access port that I'm pointing at right there, you turn the motor clockwise, and then you can clock it over watching the intake valve, as I said before. And then once the intake valve opens and closes, then you know you're on the compression stroke. So that's what I'm going to start doing right now. And again, it's clockwise rotation. Sometimes these things are marked right on the, the, on the part of the engine, rather, that, um, uh, that you're turning on, the main bolt, uh, as to what direction they go in. Uh, but often they're not, so you just have to refer to the service manual for it. At this point, I realized some dummy left it in gear. So you can see it kind of jerked back when I pull the clutch in. I put it in neutral, and we'll go back to trying this again. So we'll get her over with the intake valves just opening and closing. And then once I see them close, I'm going to go downstairs there where the, where the wrench is and look through that hole next to the... Uh, socket like I'm doing right here and I'm going to line up the marks. It's virtually impossible to show you the marks on camera. They're very faint on this particular bike, but you get my drift on this. Uh, in this particular case, uh, it is listed as FT for the front top dead center and RT for the rear top dead center. There's a small groove or line that's kind of machined into the threads of that cap. That's what I pointed at. That is your mark on the engine case to line the FT or the RT up with on this particular bike. Um, other bikes have a similar feature to do that as well. You can double check here in the right place because you should have loose valves at this point. There should be a little movement on the valves when you lift the rockers, which there is on this. Um, if, if it's not, it's either one of two things. you got to clock 180 degrees off or the valves are really tight as they sit. On this bike, there is one exhaust valve and two intake valves. So that's the one adjuster, the stem and nut adjuster on, for that e exhaust valve on the front jug. And uh, you can see it's pretty tight in there. It's going to be hard to get in there and, and adjust it or check it, I should say, with a feeler gauge. What you really need in this case is some long feeler gauges. But I made a little feeler gauge bent around that I can kind of reach in above it and pull it backwards, which actually worked pretty well. But I come up with another option for the exhaust valves using a piece of brass shim stock that I have laying around, which I'll show you in a minute, that just so happens to be 12 and a half thou, which is uh, really close to the 13 thou that is the clearance on the exhaust valves. And I'm going to reach in from this uh, direction right here eventually with that longer piece, and uh, I'm just going to make a uh, check in this adjustment really easy. You can see the spot if this camera will focus. Uh, between the actual tappet and the top of the valve that we have to check that clearance right there. 
Next clip, we do get audio back. All right, folks, here's where we're at. I wish I could have shown you this, but it's, I can't even hardly get in here myself. So I'll show you what I did, essentially. Uh, I remembered I had this brass that I found up north in my great northeast uh, adventure. That was my dad's, apparently. It's a sheet of brass, and I thought, I wonder what the thickness of this is. Remember, the, the exhaust valve is 13,000. That's the hard one, hardest one to get. So you really got to kind of reach in from the other side with like a long feeler gauge. So I took a Sterrett one inch mic and just put it where it was just dragging like you'd feel when you're doing a valve clearance and like 12 and a half thou. The tolerance is plus or minus one. So what I ended up doing was I adjusted because uh, both exhausts were a little tight. So I adjusted both exhausts. So this was just a little on the loose side. Tightened it up and then verified with my Benti guy coming back in, which is the 13, which goes in just about right. Yep, nice feel to it, you know, considering I'm feeling it through a pair of vice grips, but still I can get in there and do that. So we have a plus or minus one thou tolerance anyway, so I'm convinced these are good now. So I'm going to double check all of them because the intakes did not need to be adjusted. I'll make sure that this, the nuts are tight on the stems. And including the two exhausts that I did from there I don't know because I haven't found anything like a smoking gun that would say that um, what's making the noise now one thing I am going to check is I'm going to make sure the spark plugs are tight they're behind these uh, caps apparently you got a loose spark plug that's blowing out then that could easily uh, generate the kind of sound that would sound like a knock or a tick or something like that uh, so anyway I'm going to verify that Verify everything else is good. Uh, put the caps back on. It looks like my estimation of the dealer may have been prematurely wrong. I mean, when am I, not, when am I ever wrong, right? These uh, O-rings look like they've been replaced. So these are good O-rings. So somebody's been in here, and it was since it was them, I'd have to say, oops, because this really wasn't all that far off. In fact, if you really thought about it, it was probably just barely within specs when you consider the plus or minus one thou on the exhaust and the intake. Intakes are good, as I said. I was able to check the intakes without too much difficulty with the proper tool here. So speaking of tools, what I use to loosen the stem nuts is one of these Benti guys, which is like an ignition type wrench. You just get in here and uh, give it a good, you know, torque to loosen it. The torque spec is 18 foot pounds, but there's really no way to measure that. But I've done so many of these, I kind of know you just tighten it up until, you know, it's that German torque spec, good and tight, and then it's going to be fine. I've never had one back off before, so cross your fingers. Yeah. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is address this, and I kind of joked about this before, but I didn't see this moving, but if this engine's vibrating, I wonder if this is contributing to the noise as well. So I guess that's a net sum. Right now, I'm going to start looking for other causations of that noise spark plugs, tighten this down, anything else I see, all right? Quick sidebar. Okay, so three of the four O-rings on the caps were good. One of them looked like somebody siliconed up, but the silicone had cured, and it was actually a little prouder than the groove they sit in, so it was okay. I took that cap and put it on the rear top uh, for the intake side because it's more toward the top of the head instead of on the back, uh, just in case, you know, because the lower ones tend to leak more often because of their location so yeah i was a little premature to be premature i guess so they may or may not have replaced one or more of the o-rings in actuality okay so i'm checking the spark plugs for tightness the uh, rear one on this side there's two on each side for each cylinder two plugs even though it's uh, just two cylinder it has four plugs and so this one's good this one's tight yeah i'm not going to worry about that let me check the other ones at first I thought it might have been loose the way this wire was behaving, but when I pull the wire off, I'm like, nah, it's just the way the wire is, see? The wire looks like it's grabbing the spark plug to a point where it would wiggle the whole plug, but that's just the, the wire, that's fine. The plug is definitely not loose, so I'll go ahead and put this cap on. Let me check the other three, and I'll report back my findings, but uh, I don't think we're going to find a loose plug either. All right, guys, uh, it's the next day. I had to jump ahead and get this done. Got other things going on. But um, appears to be fixed. Let's fire it up. I'll show you what I mean. Where I can hear what I mean, at least. I don't know if the original video would capture it all that well, but uh, or did. But anyway, 
Uh, let's make sure we're in, yeah, Neutralis. And, whoops, try turning the ignition, try turning the kill switch on. Like I said, I'm um, not sure if the original clip is going to capture that, but this was really noisy, especially from the front jug. All right, so this is what I found. I think this was a combination of issues. Not necessarily a valve clearance, because although I did double check that, as you saw, and the exhaust did need a little bit of tweaking, they weren't excessive. They were actually a little on the tight side, excessively loose, I should say. They were slightly on a tight side, and it may have been not even a thou. It probably was within spec, but I adjusted them anyway. I double, triple checked that all the um, stem nuts were nice and tight. Of course, there's only six. There's three on the front, three in the back. And then put all back together this morning. Remember, this was loose. Um, I took the cover off, and I was worried that one of those bolts had fallen off and hopefully not gone anywhere, but there's a... There's a rubber trim ring or a sealing ring that goes over a groove or a, a section that those three uh, cap bolts hold this to the car body adapter in there. And uh, so that wouldn't have happened anyway, but they were loose. So I took them out, Loctited them with Loctite Blue, put them back in, torqued them up, all good. So the main problem I think was, as the customer had suggested, um, exhaust gaskets. Now he wanted me to put new ones in and I think the dealer, as I indicated earlier in the video, did that because they really don't look all that trashed. The one that came out of here was a little bit more you know, collapsed or pr compressed, smashed, than the one that came out of here. Remember, this is where the noise was. So when I went to put this back together, what I took a look was when I took it apart, uh, two of the studs came out with the nuts, not the threads. I mean, they un unthreaded normally. The threads are fine. So the stud here and the stud there. That's because the cap bolts are or were frozen to the studs on those two. So I unfroze those and cleaned them up and got them ready to reinstall and then put the studs back in. I don't lock tight the studs in. I never do that because you can run into problems in the future. But I tightened them up real good. And when I got prepared to put the exhaust back on, I figured that since this is an aftermarket exhaust, there may be a little manufacturing variance as far as those shoulders that push up against the, um, the ceiling surface on the pipe itself to the exhaust donuts. Maybe it's a little thinner because what was happening was these cap bolts were bottoming. So you really couldn't get a good torque on these. So the solution was I added two washers, two 8 millimeter washers to each one. I wanted to use little spacers, but I, didn't, I don't have any. I didn't want to take time to make them. Washers are fine. They're stainless anyway, so that's all good. Two washers, two washers, and I could feel it pull up nice. Because when you pull these up, you should feel it smash. Kind of like when you put a new spark plug in, when it seats the, the crush gasket. Then it goes a little bit further, and you're like almost thinking it's stripping, but it's not. It's just crushing that crush gasket and then it seats down. Well, that's what these ultimately did. So that's that. I think that was the main problem. The other problem was, remember I was talking about checking the spark plugs to make sure that they weren't loose, which they are not loose. Over on this side for the front jug, remember there's two plugs on each side. I pulled this cover off and the plug cap was barely on the plug. So it was definitely not touching the um, top of the spark plug. I would estimate probably that much of a gap. Now I'm telling you right now that that would make a really snappy crack sound because even with a cover and even with the rubber uh, around the spark plug, that's a lot of noise because that's arcing. It's arcing. So if it's doing that plus the leaking exhaust plus maybe a little bit of the valves, I don't know. I think several things were adding up to give the noise and, um, you know, we got it taken care of. So I was pretty confident we'd be able to do that. And so we did. 
Now the other problem I had with this was, you know, these uh, these forward controls are aftermarket. Whoa, almost dropped you. And this one, oh my God, somebody really buggered this one up. That one in there. You can see I have a washer. I, I can't. I don't have. I couldn't remake the spacers for that. Spacers are not right. But I put some washers in to help seat it, and the threads were completely botched on this top one. That goes into a tube, so there's no behind to get to, like the bottom one you can put a nut on. Somebody completely wallered it out with a drill bit and tried to run a tap in there, and it was terrible. It just wouldn't hold. Luckily, I was able to get a time cert in. I have 10 millimeter time certs, you know, the uh, 10 125s. Uh, it wasn't a great thread, but I got some threads deeper in. Use the counter bore tool that comes with the time certs. Went a little bit deeper than I normally do, as you know, deep as I could. And then use an extra long time cert. And then put some time cert red Loctite and drove that sucker in with the time cert driving tool. And when that goes all the way through, it actually spreads the back side of that time cert a little bit to kind of capture wherever it's going into. And that seems to hold pretty well. So I just use a regular cap screw. Well, this is actually a hardened one, cap bolt rather, and a washer. And this is the original bolt for the bottom. You have to have a spacer on it because it's too long. Otherwise, the nut will bottom on the edge of the threads. It's cobbled together is what I'm trying to get to here. But it's solid now, and I'm confident it's not going to go anywhere, whereas before certainly would. And I, I don't like these spacers, but... You know, unfortunately, I can't do everything to this bike. You know, the customer's got a limited budget, and, you know, it's, it's one of these things where you can only do so much. So I could certainly do a whole lot more on this thing. It needs a lot of little things, like uh, maintenance-wise. Oh, yeah, I fixed the wiring for the rear brake switch, the one that was melted to the exhaust. That's routed around here. Uh, the wire was uh, long enough, so I just cut the bad section out after I removed the um, shielding. This uh, rubber shielding is more for heat than anything else. And then I soldered and taped them and then used some liquid electrical tape over the top of that, then taped it again, and then put some more of this on and then taped over that. So it's pretty sealed up and ain't going anywhere. As far as moving or letting fluid in, the brakes work, the brake lights rather work fine for the front and the rear now, which they didn't before. This was all bent up, so I bent that back. And so she's ready to go. So yeah, that's where we're at. And uh, that's the story and I'm sticking to it. But you know, yeah, I can't, like I said, I would like to do more on these. You know how a perfectionist I am. But you know, like I said, customer budget and we got other stuff to deal with here and get into. That's all you get on that. There'll be more on that later. Speaking of moron, that'd be me. I'm out of here. This job is done. So it's going to get out of here too. If you like what you saw and you got something out of it, consider subscribing, liking the video, give me some feedback, share the video, and uh, ring the bell. You get notified when I put more junk up like this. So I guess until next time, uh, don't just repair, restore. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you on next video.